Hi friends, this is a quick video about how to make your own homemade tape echo. So this is the Marantz PMD-221 portable cassette recorder. Uh, it's powered with a, a simple wall adapter or some C batteries. Um, on the inside, it actually uses a cassette. Uh, kids, if you're watching, this is a cassette. This is what we used to use to burn songs from the old internet, meaning the radio. So you want to use a high bias type of cassette. You can use a normal bias type of cassette. Um, the beauty of this is you can actually choose the fidelity of your tape repeats and you never have to buy like a weird tape loop like the old Space Echoes used to take. Uh, now granted, this is not a Space Echo, but it does do a pretty decent tape echo sound. So let me show you how it works. So the basic concept is this is a normal tape recorder, but it has a third head. So in here, there's the normal play and record head. And then a little bit down the ways here, there's a third extra tape head. And this actually allows you to monitor the source or the tape signal. So we're going to monitor what's being recorded to tape. So out of the mixer or out of the tape cassette on this side, we split off the output signal and run it through a mixer. In this case, I'm using my modular here. Um, and you feed a little bit of it back into itself. Um, I actually had to use a low pass filter to roll off some of the high end because until I did that, I was getting weird radio frequency interference, um, literally like you're dialing an old FM radio. So you roll the high end down a little bit and cut that out and it gives you a clean repeat tone. Um, there's a little mod you can do by using a high pass filter. I'll show you this as well. So. To make this whole thing work, you actually have to press play and record on the tape. So here's the dry signal. All right, so very basic OP1 type sound. Um, we're going to press, press play and record. And this cassette deck also has a pitch control on the front. There is a record gain uh, recording level knob. And then it's got some different modes here where you can set up the recording mode be manual gain control or there's a limiter. The limiter allows you, if you set it to that, it prevents overflow, um, which I can maybe show you in a second. But I prefer to do manual because you can make it distort on itself, uh, which can be very pleasant with the old tape echo sound. So let's get started. So it is recording. Now we we'll should hear some echo. it's echoing you can turn the record level to feedback you can use the pitch control to adjust the speed the one limitation of this is because this is effectively a fixed third tape head the way that the pitch control actually changes the distance of the echoes, the speed of the echoes, is it slows down the motor that's inside here. So when you get down to really low speeds, you get a little tape warble. Which a lot of new digital uh, models of tape echoes simulate as um, something that tape echoes did. So another thing that you can do, and I mentioned that I would maybe show this, is in the feedback loop from the sound coming out with the high end being rolled off, you can actually run that after the, the signal you feed back into it after you roll the high end off, you can put some low pass, uh, high pass filter on to make it to where the signal that goes back into the tape echo doesn't get boomy. So let me show you how this works. So now there's no low end being fed back into the tape echo. And 
it causes a high pass type of trail which is um, something I used to actually have to use my space echo with a mixer to get so when I make this permanent I'm gonna build a box underneath this that houses a low pass filter a high pass filter possibly a tone control and it's gonna have to have a power supply because the, the uh, tone circuitry I'm gonna build is gonna be different voltage than the power adapter to this provides Turn that high pass off. So anyways, that's kind of the basic demo. Um, I think I bought this tape recorder on eBay for 50 bucks, brand new. It actually came with the, uh, the case, the battery, the wall adapter. They sell as high as 220, 250, but you can commonly get them for around 30 to 50 bucks um, in various working order. I happen to get a mint one for 50 bucks, so I've got really lucky. Um, but with a little bit of basic modification and some circuitry, uh, you can actually have yourself a DIY tape echo. Um, like I said, this is my mixer. You could technically use an EQ on a mixer to roll off the high end for the repeats that go in. Um, you can probably even do the same thing for the high pass frequency. So you don't need a modular synth. You just need some cables and this unit and a basic modification um, inside here to enable the pitch control to work while it's in record mode. Uh, basically that meant cutting one trace on the circuit board um, and wiring that trace to a separate point. One wire, one circuit trace cut uh, and that worked for me. You can use it without doing that mod to the circuit board but you can't change the pitch um, you're, you're locked to an echo rate, and that's not desirable. Um, so anyways, if you have any questions about how that worked or uh, what to do to make this happen, hit me up in the comments, and thanks for again stopping by and checking out one of my videos.